Welcome! Yeah! Special episode! Guys! Oh! Can you believe it? 150 episodes of Spontaneous Nation. Oh my, spontaneous reactions. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even count on this happening. Hundred and fifty, ladies and gentlemen. That is, it's it's a hundred, and then a half a hundred, right on top. How many things? How many things in life go on for a hundred and fifty? Tortoises, certainly. Tortoises, they live so long. Do they have any idea of what is happening around them? Like, was there a tortoise? Let's say there was a tortoise that was dying in 1986. And, you know, everyone's gathered around the hospital bed. (laughs) Or maybe the tortoise is in hospice care and so it's at home. And someone says, the priest or somebody says, Hey, tortoise, what was it like when the phone was invented? And this tortoise is like, the what? (laughs) The telephone? Hmm. I don't know. Would you like to talk about lettuce leaves? Because then I could talk about it for the rest of my life. Which is not very long, by the way. (laughs) Tortoise, I think, though, it's a good animal to have lived that long. They don't take up a lot of space. They're not getting in the way. They don't eat much. They don't make noise. What if you had a... What if dogs were exactly the same, but they lived for 150 years? (laughs) And then it was like you had to will your dog to someone... And then the dog, for how many decades will the dog be whining for you to come back when you're dead? (laughs) This dumb pea brain dog, he doesn't know. Finally gets used to the new owner. That person dies. What if giraffes lived 150 years and they never stop growing? Oh, guys, I'm sorry. I'm super high. <laughs> That's, that was a logistical error on my part. I forgot that we were recording today, and I ate a crate of mushrooms. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Age with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to have a free-form conversation with me inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest, then... I invite some improviser pals onto the program to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes, oftentimes utilizing details gleaned from the conversation with the aforementioned special guest. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he has gone like for 150 episodes now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a special time. I'm surrounded by... Some of my favorites, including this returning guest making his third appearance on Spontaneous Nation. Please welcome back to the show, Nathan Lee Graham. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Whatever the hell that. No, you nailed it. What? A- <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, Nathan, I'm thrilled to see you. Thank you for being here. So glad to be back here. We are lucky that you're in town. You're working yes. on the uh, television program LA, LA to, to Vegas, Vegas. <laughs> on Fox, and that's not the news channel. You know, I'm so sick of people asking me. There are two separate things. 20th Century Fox that's right. is not the Fox News channel that is in New York. That's right. It's not. Fox News is the name of that Fox station. Fox News. News with a liquid U. <laughs> Please. News. Use your liquid U. Yes, like Julie Andrews. <laughs> Fox News. 
Um, and this is a program about uh, uh, the goings on. Yes. On a commercial airplane. Yes. And this is a period piece. Well, <laughs> we have some period people on it, like me. You know. Sure. Veterans. You play. Oh, you don't play a time traveler on the show. No, no, okay. no. Right. Not at all. It's a workplace comedy. Veterans. I would say that it's a combination of, you know, wings and the love boat. <laughs> and... <laughs> And, you know, and a little bit of the office sprinkled on top. There we go. It's the perfect recipe. Listen, it's funny as hell, <laughs> and people are going to really, really, really love it. Fantastic. Yes. And what what nights will the, will this be uh, seen on television? Well, you know what? I don't even know yet, but I suspect— This is how I knew this all is. I know. It's so brand new, <laughs> but I've asked them not to put it on the same night as Will and Grace because I want to watch that. <laughs> ha! So, it will not be on that night, which That's is Thursday— that's a Thursday. Um, so hopefully it won't be on that night because that's what I want to watch. And I hopefully it won't be on the same night as Game of Thrones. But other than that, <laughs> I'm good. Well, listen, by the time this airs, people are going to be hearing this February 5th. February yes. 5th. Oh, yes. It's going to be on and I'm going to be like even more famous than I am now. There we go. So Look out world. Get into that. <laughs> Already into it. All right. Nathan, I have a question for you. Please. It's from our previous episode's guest. I can't think of a better question to be asking you. <laughs> I'm thrilled that this has happened this way. <laughs> Nathan, what's the best thing to find underwater? Oh, my God. <laughs> See, this is when the brain has to break down. Because the first thing that comes to your mind. The brain has to break down. <laughs> because you have to break it down. Because oh. it's, it's, like, um, it's like when you, you know, fire off a really horrible email. Mm -hmm. You need to reread that shit. Reread the email before you send. That's right. So you can edit. Because what I was first going to say would actually probably get me in jail. In jail? Well, probably. <laughs> you laugh now at certain people and you get prosecuted. I mean, you know, you just. <laughs> so I'm not going to say what needs to be underwater. Okay. You know. <laughs> Uh, but but ask me the question again, please. What's the best thing to find underwater? Well, I mean, obviously fish. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but what do I know? You know, speak, <laughs> speak, speaking of fish, I'm thinking of becoming a pescatarian. Really? Yes. How long have you been thinking about this? About five minutes ago. How no, you? <laughs> no, no, actually, for a while. Have you ever tried this before? I have, mm -hmm. and, and, and it was very good, and then I read something about mercury levels and all that sort of sure. thing, and I got terrified. And then also, you know, tuna being scarce, mm -hmm. and so, you know, I was like, well, chicken of the sea, there's another thing that's underwater, chicken. Um, uh, I, I, I'm thinking about becoming a pescatarian because so many people, particularly out here in Los Angeles, <laughs> are vegan. If I go to Gracias Madre one more time. <laughs> Gracias, Madre. It's a notable vegan restaurant here in Los Angeles. Which is lovely. I just don't need to go there anymore. <laughs> For the rest of 2017. I'm so fucking sick of going to Gracias, Madre. <laughs> but other than that, I'm thinking of becoming a pescatarian because I want to ease my way mm -hmm. into not doing... First of all, I don't eat beef or pork anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... But... Um, <laughs> but... I would like to, you know, get away maybe from some of the yard bird, sure. all, also known as chicken. That's right. <laughs> you know, you've heard of yard bird. I've heard of yard bird. And turkey. Right. Now, Thanksgiving is coming up. Gobble, gobble. So I don't, you know, I, I want to keep in that, but also we can get into the traditions of what that is and isn't. Do you think this will be your last Thanksgiving turkey? I do not. <laughs> 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 Listen, we got enough lying going on in this country. Ain't no use of me lying. That's right. <laughs> Two lying on self we, we got absolutely. We, we got enough lying going on in this country. You don't need me to pile on. What do you eat for Christmas? Do you have a tradition? Uh, for Christmas, we we usually have. Um, uh, something for everyone. Mm -hmm. So we have fish, mm -hmm. we have the ham, and we also have the turkey and a chicken. Probably a capon. <laughs> sure, why not? Yes, and if you don't know what that is, look it up. I get sick of explaining stuff to folk. We got Google. <laughs> Just look it up. Shit. How many times would you say you've answered the question, what is a capon? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times. You'd be amazed. Oh, I, with you, I would not be surprised. You know, particularly in Manhattan. <laughs> What's a capon? What, what's a capon? 
You know, and you can put a nice orange slice in it. It's lovely, but you have to buy several. It's usually one capon per person. (laughs) You know, they say you can't truly call yourself a New Yorker until you can define what a capon is. Exactly. (laughs) And if you don't know what that means, Google that too. (laughs) Nathan, do you like to spend time underwater? Do you like to swim? Do you like to snorkel? Oh, now we're talking about Aquaman. Um, let's see. He's never far from our thoughts. You know, you know, I do enjoy a coral reef. (laughs) And I actually like wearing coral. You know, actually I'm all seasons because I'm so dark. You know, I've had my seasons done. And if you don't know what this means, you got to Google this shit too. Um, but you know, they put several colors on your shoulder and they flap them over. So, you know, you go through the primaries and the secondary colors. Black and white are actually not colors. They're called basics. Okay. But um, you, you flip them over and you find out what seasons you are. Mm-hmm. Spring, summer, winter, fall. Mm-hmm. And I'm all seasons because I have a very dark palette mm-hmm. just to begin with. So um, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been snorkeling? Snorkeling. Yes, I do enjoy a coral reef. Mm-hmm. And then we're back. We're back to the coral. I enjoy wearing coral, and I enjoy coral reefs. You see, I'm always going to get us back. I'm always going to get us back. Do you like coral singing? Coral singing is very good, and it's spelled differently. That's right. Just in case y'all don't know that. Coral and coral. Oh, you've got your you've got your googling cut out for you right, this week, right, listeners. right. Now, mind you. You know, coral lives. So when you're snorkeling, all of those things are alive. People are like, no, it's just like plants. I'm like, plants are alive. (laughs) You know, people are not very bright. That's very true. I do enjoy a snorkel. I do enjoy a snorkel. You know, I learned to to swim very late. How old were you? 30. Wow. Yeah. And I'm older than that now. (laughs) (laughs) But not by much. Not by much. I mean, you know. (laughs) Also, you can Google that, unfortunately. That's right. (laughs) Look, all seasons don't crack. Uh, yeah. um, have you had... Yes, exactly. Uh, Unless you're smoking. <laughs> have you had encounters with undersea creatures whilst snorkeling? You know what? I have touched a manatee. Really? Yes. Yeah, so when I call someone a manatee, I know of which I speak. <laughs> um, uh, they're very slow-moving creatures, and mm-hmm. sometimes they get, you know, the blades caught on their... Their skin. I've, so I've touched a manatee. Um, I've also uh, uh, maybe petted a, a dolphin once. Mm-hmm. So this is this is really lovely. These are all lovely things. Absolutely. Um, but I'm not the best swimmer. But I do swim better when I'm underwater. Mm-hmm. So there you have it. Did you? What What prompted the decision to learn to swim at thirty? Well, my father tried to teach me how to swim very early. I was very frightened, and he did not go about it well. (laughs) You know, throwing one into the deep end in the pool and then calling one a sissy does not always pan out. So, and when they have to get the hook to pull you out, this is all very traumatic, but you know, I've I've moved on. I've moved on. So, this literally happened. Um, I was at Manhattan Plaza in New York, and they have a wonderful pool, rooftop pool. I was in the sauna, uh, the sort of uh, the whirlpool, if you will, hot tub, mm-hmm. and, you know, getting all of the disease from that. And uh, <laughs> I was looking over, and I literally looked at some very elderly people mm-hmm. um, swimming. And I said, it's amazing. When they get out of the pool, they're ancient, you know, giving a serious gray wolf. But then when they get into the pool, they become lithe. Look that up. And very buoyant. Look that up. And, you know. I mean, there's, there's some. <laughs> people are reasonably intelligent. Well, you're going to listen to this show. Listen, I understand. Listen, Better safe than sorry, of course. A, we got a monosyllabic administration, so I don't know what's happening. So, you know, teaching the folk. But, um, and, and they become young and, you know, just very sort of. And I was like, it's like cocoon. It's like they're, they're amazing, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, if they can do this, I can do this too. Mm-hmm. And I literally got out of the hot tub, went to the young instructor, and I said, listen, I don't know how to swim. Um, he looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, seriously, I don't know how to swim, and I'm, a f- I'm terrified of this. Can you help me? And he said, yeah, let's start tomorrow. And we literally, I said, okay, let's do that. So we literally get there the next morning, and I said, I can maybe go underwater for maybe 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. He said, oh, no, no, no. And we did it, and I came back up with such a force because he tried to hold me down for a moment. He was like, man, you really are like, you know. I was like, yeah, five years old. Try this again. <laughs> and slowly but surely, uh, we did it, and I was underneath for, you know, two minutes, then five minutes. Then So 
it was amazing. And I thank that guy, I forget his name now, who helped me many years ago. Mm-hmm. But um, I learned how to swim that way. Did you learn how to swim at that hotel pool? Yes. <laughs> is that pool, is that, what, which hotel was this again? No, this is an actual uh, residence called Manhattan Plaza. Oh, Manhattan Plaza. Okay. And the, they have a gym. Okay. And it's on between 43rd and 42nd Streets, mm-hmm. between 9th and 10th Avenues. <laughs> Manhattan Plaza. If you would like to see the spot where Nathan learned to swim, yes. or if you'd like to put up a plaque. Yes, please do. Now you know where it is. I prefer it in bronze. <laughs> what is what is left for you in terms of accomplishments like that, things that you have put off that you still have yet to do? Oh, that's a very good question. Thank you. Wow, wowzers. I've I've completed all of my dreams. You know, um <laughs> you know what I really want to do? I want to be a uh, a superhero, a villain rather, a mm-hmm. villain in a Marvel comic. I've never done that mm-hmm. yet. And that's a big I mean it sounds like well, that's not a great dream, but you know, when you're an actor, um it's a lofty one and it's exciting and I would love I would love to be the first sort of gay villain. Mm-hmm. Um, going around, you know, killing people with my walking stick, okay? <laughs> you know, but looking very chic in some sort of, you know, Alexander McQueen or, you know, some sort of Armani, but just killing folks. I would love that. And, and I just think it would be terribly exciting. I mean, you know, I'll be a villain with heart. Of course. You know. Nathan, of course. Diamond-shaped hearts. But, um... <laughs> You know, something like that. That's a big deal for me. Like, mm. so I want to make that happen. So, and I would love to do it before, while Stan is still alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that would be great because he's so amazing to me. So that's one thing I would love to do. Um, and other than that, God, I'm really sort of very boring, you know? <laughs> I mean, I want world peace and all of this. I want, you know, I want Puerto Rico to have some lights and some water. Sure. You know, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, But as far as my lofty goals, I've really accomplished everything that I set out to do so early Mm -hmm. that I just want to maintain my sort of groove and stay healthy and all of that. I mean, these don't sound like big deals, but you know. But they are the biggest deals. They're the biggest deals. And Nathan, that's what I hope for you as well. So Marvel. (laughs) <laughs> gay villain. If you're listening, Marvel gay villain. Marvel gay villain. <laughs> I want a, a, a dangerous walking stick <laughs> that I puncture people with. It writes itself. Yes, it writes itself and lots of, you know, cuts to me smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Lee Graham, thank you so much for being here. Wait a minute, it's already over. It's this already happens over. every time. I know. Every, I know. Every fucking time this happens. It's so easy breezy. It's so easy that you've, it feels like no time has passed. I know. And yet we've been talking for 45 minutes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, Nathan Lee Graham, where can people find you online should they wish to find you and should you wish to be found? Listen, um, Nathan Lee Graham, everything. NathanLeeGraham.com, and that, that will take you to everything. You know, my <laughs> Instagram page and my Twitter. My Twitter. Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, Twitter. Um, and uh, I think I'm even st- still on Facebook. Wow. Right? How is it still around? You know what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They're like a... I don't know. You can say I, I won't say... No, because I might get in trouble. <laughs> they're everywhere. You know, they're everywhere. They're like the... What do they call it? The fifth channel? The fifth column? The somebody's column? The fifth... The fifth column. The fifth column. Yes. A sort of sinister... Yes. ...organization. Sinister. Sinister is a great word. Look Thank that you. up, too. <laughs> Google sinister. And do you, it's February 5th. Do you have any live performances coming up that people should know about? No, no live performances. Oh. I'm just going to be working on my new album. Well, there you have it. Yes, Nathan Lee Graham, NYC Jazz. So it's going to be Nathan Lee Graham, uh, NYC <laughs> Jazz City. Classique. But I don't know when it's... I'm st- I'm going to be working on it in February. It's not going to be finished. Have you selected the songs? Do you know I have. Okay. Mostly Cole Porter. Beautiful. But there are going to be a couple of more composers in there. But all jazz, all traditional, and I'm really, really very excited about that. I encourage people to look all of that up. Please do. Nathan Lee Graham, thank you for being here. Thank you, Paul. We are going to take a break during the break. You will listen to the ad. See you soon. Through sound. Hi there, Paul F. Tompkins for Lisa Mattresses. I'm out here on the street. Just want to talk to people about sleeping. Excuse me, you two. Yeah, Hello? hi. What's yes, up? Yes, I'm sorry to interrupt you. What, well, are, what are you on your way to do? You what did he say? Uh, we're going. We're on our way to go to a picnic. Oh, <laughs> this is my with my, the mayor and his wife. My this is my son Tonard. Yeah. Yes. And this is my mother Hannah. 
So, Hannah and Toner, you're on your way to a picnic with the mayor. Are you feeling well rested? Oh. Honestly, not really. I still sleep in a car bed. I should mention I'm 37. <laughs> And it's a mother, little short for me. Mother gets all the nice mattresses. That's right. Yes. Mo- mother does Princess in the Peace style and sleeps on seven mattresses. <laughs> what if I told you, Tonard and Hannard? Hannard? It's Hannard. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do apologize. This is unbelievable. No, millennials have no respect anymore. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Listen, I, I, what if I told you you could get a good night's sleep <laughs> on just one normal mattress? What? That's for an adult. Mm, this sounds like a trap. I don't know. How much does it cost? It's hold on. It's before we Remember, get into cost. I'm from, a, I'm from the depression. <laughs> I, I, oh, I didn't realize you look terrific. Thank you. I never would have guessed you were that old. I invented dish soap, so I'm very rich. You would. How old are you? <laughs> Thirty-seven, but I'm very frugal. <laughs> Okay. My boy's well, we, a genius. I, I wish we had time to parse that, but we I have to get Let to Let me these, put it another way. These. I think I invented this show. Oh, now I understand. Young man, you know we're uh, meeting with the picnic with the mayors for seven more hours. Yeah. Oh, got okay. time to kill. Perfect. Well, then let me tell you about Lisa Mattresses. First of all, they have a mission, which is a better place to sleep for everybody. That includes you two. Oh, I love inclusive I like language. It. Yeah. <laughs> it does get much more inclusive than everybody. <laughs> now, here's Is the thing. Is it L-A-S-A? No, it's like not. Like a woman's name? I'm glad you asked. It sounds like that, but it's spelled L-E-E-S-A. It's a homonym. Oh. Go back to New York with those words. You know what? I'm sorry. It's a homophone. Oh, oh. yes. I knew what he meant. Does that soften it a little bit for you? It does. That's much better. Thank you. Thank you, Tonerd. (laughs) I'm a proud homophone. Listen. Here's what I want you to know about Lisa. They're not just trying to let you get a good night's sleep. They also care about the world. For every 10 mattresses My generation didn't. No, they didn't. We did it all. They were having a hard time with the Depression. Now we polluted in the 80s. I I was the first (laughs) big banker in the 80s. Did you think the Depression was in the 80s? No. You got into banking in your 60s? Yeah. Oh. The only woman on Wall Street to take oil companies and dump them all over I wish we had more time. I wish we had more time because that's (laughs) fascinating. But I want to tell you. But I you, love sleep. Unlike your generation, Lisa, for every 10 mattresses they sell, they donate one to a shelter. It's their 110 program. Sure. I like That's it. That's wonderful. Yeah, it is wonderful. And I'm sure you've heard of the 110 it's program. really defensive. They also plant one tree for every mattress sold. That's a 1-1 program. That is, you take a mattress out, you put a tree in. It's That's like that right. saying. Yeah, you take a mattress out of the forest, you put, put a, a tree, tree in. And did it make a sound when you did it? Not if, well, it, it's such it a good did, mattress. It did, it did, it did. Well, it's such a good mattress. Well, oh, that it didn't. Well, there's probably like a There's a lot noises. of theories on this. Again, we're really tight on time. Uh, I have a logging company. Let me know where those they plant those trees. I'll so you're around. out of banking and into logging. I mean, I have my fingers in all kinds of nasty businesses. <laughs> Your fingers in businesses. Okay. Listen, not to mention, let's get into the the guts of Lisa Mattress, okay? They have three premium foam layers. Oh. All right. Yeah, now you're listening. They have a patented universal adaptive feel. They're designed for all types of sleepers. Whether you sleep in a car bed, I don't know how you do it at at 37, you're clearly six foot four. It's not easy. I'm six foot four and it was a VW bug. I mean, it was a car. It was a real car. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was like- I know everyone makes that mistake. Whenever I go on a date, it's the first, obviously it's the first question, what kind of bed do you sleep in? So you have a Volkswagen chassis in your bedroom that you sleep in. I do. Okay. It's not, it's not, I can't say it's comfortable, but I can say it's unusual. 100%, no argument here. Thank you. Do you think Elisa could fit in the in the chassis of that? Uh, Shove Elisa in there? I would say this would be more of a replacement. Oh. You know what? I'm open to reply. I'm a ve- people don't know this. I'm a very open-minded person. I've, you know, I voted for uh, n- new, um, what do they call it? President and everything. <laughs> You voted for new president. Every election I vote for, for a new president. Oh, sure. Yeah. That is very open-minded. <laughs> yeah. Do you regret talking to us? Well, no, I don't at all. I, I think you're fascinating people, mm-hmm. and I think you're going to be fascinated by this list of foam layers. You got a two-inch Avena foam top layer for cooling and breathability. Are those two things? Oh, that actually yeah. sounds delicious. Yeah, it does sound. Oh, my mouth is watering. <laughs> a two-inch memory foam middle layer for body contouring and pressure relief. Do you have pressures in your life? Oh, oh my, my, my God, lower my back's sciatica. A mess. 
a mask. And you have sciatica. Oh, yeah. I, bore, I was born with it, but I got right. worse. You're, you're folding yourself up into the either the back seat or the front seat of a Volkswagen. Exactly. You, would not, you, you would be surprised. Everyone thinks that sleeping in a VW bug <laughs> would be really great for your back. Newsflash, CNN, or whatever you're getting your news from, it's not. Everyone thinks that? I thought, it's everyone I've ever met. Hmm. But, you know, the VW dealers, there's my best friends. But, I'm sorry, so... <laughs> Are you trading in your bed every year for a new model? I am. What, what else do you do at the dealership? Ah, okay. <laughs> Drive it right into my house, this, and then we have to do construction. It's that dish it's soap money. It's all the dish soap money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. One final layer. A six-inch six dense core support foam for durability and structure, which, and this is important, it works for sleepers of all types. What I type of sleeper would you say you are? Language. Upside down. Upside down? Okay. And what type of sleeper would you say you are? I sleep face down. <laughs> Just face down. <laughs> no she pillow. falls Not- into bed. We do a routine every night. She falls. <laughs> Face plants into bed and I'd laugh myself to sleep. God, I want to hear more about this routine, but we are very, we're very tight on time. I want to buy this mattress. Listen, not while you're buying the mattress. I want you to also take a look at this other stuff that Lisa's now offering. Oh. Lisa Pillow. Blanket, foundation, and frame. So they're not just mattresses anymore. There's all this stop. other stuff. I always thought it's pillows were a stop. myth. They really exist. Oh dear. Not even a pillow in the VW? I don't think they're real. They are real. Yeah, sure. So are taxes, right? (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, No wonder Lisa's one of those. So are dogs, right? Yeah, I've seen that a million times in the movies. You don't believe that dogs are real? No. In Mm. fact, I believe everything is real. But when I saw Marley and me, I said, that's a fucking lie. God, I wish. I wish there was more time to talk to you guys. (laughs) Because you were truly fascinating people. How rude that you approached us out of time. I just, I... (laughs) That's a fair point, sir. Tonard, you got me dead to rights. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to try Lisa Mattress in your own home for 100 nights, risk-free. Done. Risk-free. Oh, I like risks. And these these mattresses, let's say you're, I don't know where you live, if this is your home base, but- uh, Brentwood. Brentwood? Okay, great. Because Lisa- Adjacent. <laughs> mm, you didn't- Okay. I mean, you didn't need to add that. I wasn't going to press you on North that, Brentwood adjacent. North, okay. Northwest, technically. It's getting very specific. Do you want to get about your address while you're at it? Sure. <laughs> 783 Celebration Studio Lane. I'll let people <laughs> look up the zip themselves. Lisa mattresses are available in the United States, UK, Canada, Germany. There They're was available. never even a studio on that street. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, now yeah, we understand rude. <laughs> you understand my rudeness. <laughs> They're also available in Germany. If you ever go to Germany, if you move there and want a mattress, and they, you get free shipping. It's a 100% American-made mattress, and it ships compressed in a box oh, right to your door. Take them out like biscuits. No, it's just the one mattress. But then you open it up and it pops and you take out like a biscuit. Out. <laughs> It pops out like a biscuit. A biscuit. A biscuit can. You never you never opened a biscuit out of a box that was shipped to you? I, I, not that I know of. This a guy's unreal. In. You're saying like a Pillsbury, like you open up the tin. Well, and I do off brand, but yeah, exactly. Don't <laughs> mention pills because you'll name them all. Prozac, xylophan. Uh, okay. <laughs> xylophan. <laughs> it's, it's for xylophone oh. fix. <laughs> And for when you can't, she she went through a period for a full year where she couldn't stop playing the song. <laughs> I thought it was, it was like if if your ribs make noise when you tap on. When them. like crows try to play them, like a WB cartoon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or you could try the Lisa mattress at the Lisa Dream Gallery in Soho, New York City, and Virginia <gasps> Beach, and over eighty West Elm stores nationwide. I wow. love West Elm. That sounds nice. What's your favorite item at West Elm? I oh I like sconces. Hmm. The modern sconces. Oh, you like modern sconces. Don't give me that Tiffany lamp sconce. I'll throw it right in the garbage. <laughs> they have the most beautiful, I, I don't know if it was West Elm, but I one time went in a store, the most beautiful bird. I think it was a West Elm. Just a, a living bird. Yeah. Like it flown in the store? I, yeah, I was flying around and I said, is that thing for sale? And they said, it's absolutely not. We're trying to get out of the store. And I said, can I pay you anyway? I gave them $10,000, which was everything I owned, but I was on the run. I'd been kidnapped. 
Sold as a drug mule, God, Mexico I wish City. I, I wish I had more time. <laughs> that this God, so it, we're, we're, we're down to the last line in the required call to action. Get $100 off when you go to leesa.com slash PFT. That is leesa.com slash PFT. Get $100 off. Well, listen, uh, Tonard and Hannah, I, I <laughs> thank you so much. I hope you have a terrific time with the mayor at the picnic. Come with us. Yeah. We've got an extra spot in the VW. He's great. He votes against every, all rights. <laughs> I'll bring the potato salad. Oh, welcome back. Everyone, what did I tell you? <sighs> special times. Call for special people. I'm surrounded by them. Mm-hmm. Seated right next to me. I'm looking right at him. There's no mistaking that I'm looking at you, right? <laughs> Sean Distant is back. Turn your radios up. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Turn the radios oh. up. Get this your is... volume button Uh-oh. and turn your radios up. Oh, folks. If you only knew you're about to. <laughs> rabble, rabble. Rabble. <laughs> Turn them up. Sean, thank you. Please, Sean. Okay, Don't poke the bear. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Thank you for being here. Yes, Paul. Thank you for having me. Let's check in briefly. All your right. tax documents. Here are they go. still in New York? <laughs> yes, they are. And I texted <laughs> I texted my ex before I came here. I was like, I'm going to this podcast. We need an update on Nathan to fill you in. <laughs> you didn't tell me I was here with an ex-con. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Someone to fair out. Hold on. No, no. I feel like the details have <laughs> led you astray here. Uh, Tax evasion. No. <laughs> I used to live with uh, my girlfriend in New York, and I left some stuff there after we broke up. And mm. it's been there now for over a year. Yeah. Oh. Well, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. I texted her today about like, uh, hey, I'm going to this podcast. Uh, what's the update? Have you thrown this stuff away? And oh, that's that's where you left it last. Right. That, I, oh, look, I don't need just that stuff. throw it just away if you it. need it. Yeah. And I thought, oh yeah, that, this will be a fun thing to text her. I don't think she was amused by the question. Oh. <laughs> I got an immediate no. Haven't thrown it away. And then, uh, uh, yeah, that's kind of where it's. Was it an engagement ring? No, no. <laughs> It was just like tax documents. And oh, some I see. Jackets and <laughs> boots. <laughs> Jack boots. <laughs> Jacket boots. You Jack know boots. It is. Oh, Nathan, you're you're twisting all these. <laughs> now, you're twisting. Yeah, you're making this sound much crazier than it really. Is. But the tax do- the tax documents remain <laughs> intact. <laughs> Why? Why is she not thrown them I, out? I think it's more work to take this heavy box of documents. This is now. I was thinking about. Is your thing. social security on them tax documents? Yes, Nathan. Well, I believe so. I'm in a lot. Of, I know. I know. <laughs> so far, I've been safe. Uh, my identity has not been so stolen. Far. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jean, we will definitely check back with you next time we come to the show. <laughs> Ongoing see drama. Where we are. Oh, Ladies oh. and gentlemen, I am going to look away from Sean and look directly across the table from him. Kitty corner for me. Meow. Carl Tart is back on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, turn your radios down. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. oh he you're, reclaims it. You're listening to WPFT. <laughs> it's 35 minutes after the hour. Coming up next, we got some NYC jazz classic <laughs> by Mr. Nathan B. Graham. Scooty bop and shooby doo. bop I must say, Carl was right. You should have turned your radio down. Oh. <laughs> now you that see. That was the right. That now was the right. See. The right volume oh. at all times. Carl, how have you been since the last time I've seen you? I've been great. Uh, okay. I've all been right. Great. Hey, Paul, don't ever ask me a question, bro. <laughs> 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 I've been great, Paul. How you been? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, do you playing. have do you have a favorite Cole Porter song? Cole Porter. Uh <laughs> no. Wait, wait a minute, like, careful. I don't know. I don't know. You probably do and don't know. Is it like does he sing like for make and whoopee? <laughs> oh, that's really good though. Is that that's, not, that's George Kirsch? Oh no, 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 wait, Cole Porter. Another nine, another It's the same song. <laughs> oh, it's the same song. <laughs> yeah, same song. But it's I, another I, I'm part. glad that you know the refrain and the verse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wait, Cole Porter, uh not it's delightful. It's yes, delightful. Yes, 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 yes. 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 <laughs> He had a movie, right? Yeah, a movie came out about his life. Well, uh, uh, De Lovely, right? De Lovely, Lovely yeah, yes. Yeah. Kevin Klein. Yeah. Mr. Porter mm. from Peru, Indiana. Yeah. My mama made me watch it. 
Or Eleanor. I she made remember. you watch it. She was hogging the TV. Uh-huh. <laughs> was this back home or this was here? Here. This was here. You only have one? <laughs> only one mama? Television. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Which is the more uh, insulting question? <laughs> at that point, at that point, yeah, because this is, I was in like, I was in like high school. And uh, <laughs> the question remains, you only had one? <laughs> I was in I was in high school and I didn't have my mom didn't give me cable in my room. Oh yes, mm-hmm. so she was like that's very common. You would just play video games and uh, watch basketball. Right, she's and right. They, those two, I was like, Mom, I gotta get cable. I want to get the sports package. And she was like, The Clippers come on Channel Five and the Lakers come on Channel Nine. That's all you need. And I had rabbit ears. And this is when I was in high school. It's like ten years ago. Right. So uh, she made me watch The Lovely. <laughs> Start to finish, saw the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I, I saw the whole thing. <laughs> I think I can't remember. I, I haven't seen it since then. But yeah, <laughs> you weren't you weren't pulling that back out and watching it again. No, I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> uh, are you gl- are you glad now that you had that experience with your yeah, mom? Because I was able to answer that question. Yes, and, there we uh, go. And knowledge is power. The more you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Very Star very flying. Good. Yes, <laughs> Carl. I'm going to turn away from you. Oh no, don't. And t- <laughs> And I'm going to look right next to you, right across the table from me. You just heard her on our last episode. Too much. Live from... <laughs> it was too much. Why do you say it's too much? I was on both. And now I'm here again. It's true. People this are going to be in a like, row. get her out of there. This is very rare. Yeah. Not many people have done three in a row. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why? Don't apologize. Okay, you're right. Yeah, no, you're right. This is my shit. <laughs> Turn your radio around. <laughs> Turn it around. I'm on the back of it too. <laughs> Tawny Newsome is back. What up? Yeah. Tawny, yes. you know who Cole Porter is. I love Cole Porter. But you also like these weird country people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do like these weird country people. You like roots music, right? Yeah. Like the old stuff? I, you know, I'm not sure what that term really is because sometimes people call like the Jason Brown band. Like or Zach Brown band. Or I like Zach Brown. They call that Roots, and I'm like, no, nah, that's not. No, right. I don't know who that is. I, Roots was a, like a miniseries. <laughs> now hold on a second. <laughs> you know Zach Brown band <laughs> by <laughs> Alex Haley. Yeah, <laughs> my parents said I could stay out of school that week. Oh, you got to stay home from school an yes, entire week to watch because, Roots because of reparations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's this nice. is it. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> Everyone, everyone gets a week off of school, even Stevens. <laughs> An opportunity to not learn for a week. Yes. Is your. Yes. Reparations. <laughs> it's also called Americana. Yeah. That music. I, I like I like traditional country. And right. then, because when I was a kid, I came up during the new traditionalist phase. And mm-hmm. I was like, I just talked about this last week. I was a rodeo kid. So, and my <laughs> mom is white and I lived in this very white rural area. So I was listening to a lot of like Trisha Yearwood and Vince Gill who mm-hmm. were like reclaiming from the pop country sound. They were right. reclaiming that like traditional sound. So I like that. Vince Gill, one of the few non-hat performers. No hat ever because he's got that great hair. He's got a beautiful thick head of hair. Yeah. I was at a wedding in Nashville recently that he was like a friend of the bride. And so he played the their like walk down the aisle song. Mm-hmm. I took a video. I sent it to my mom. She replied in the most extreme. I've never seen her not use punctuation. She was just like, what is he doing there? Who is getting married? Is his wife Amy Grant there also? <laughs> she was shook. Was Amy Grant there? Amy Grant was not in that town. <laughs> no. I went to a wedding not long ago where uh, they had, uh, it, was a, it was a fancy wedding and as a special guest, they had this country artist that I'd never heard of. He was a modern country person. I don't know them. And so... Th- <laughs> I don't, I don't know them. I don't know them. And um, <laughs> they so they had this guy sing the specific song uh-huh. that meant a lot to the bride. And then he stuck around and sang with the band some more. And he did like All Night Long by Lionel Richie. Oh. He did all these other like wedding staples. And I'm like, oh, of course, this guy's probably played a million weddings on his way up. Oh, so yeah. he knows all these songs already. Like there was no, it was just like fell back into place like <laughs> yep. all night long. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> That's like me with about, Cole Porter songs. But wearing a cowboy hat. Yeah. <laughs> Lionel Richie should have worn more cowboy hats. 
But yeah, I sang a lot of Cole Porter songs coming up, so that's why I feel like I know a lot, and a lot of Gershwin. But. I got hung up on Lionel Richie wearing a cowboy hat, because I think it actually would look really good on him. He's got a great head. He, he really does. does. I bet there's a picture of him in, I feel like I've seen a picture of him in a cowboy hat. Listeners. Yeah. Google it, idiots. Google it. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you stupid people. <laughs> Google Lionel Richie cowboy hat. <laughs> Turn your radio around, pick up your computer, put it down, and Google Lionel Richie cowboy hat. <laughs> Lionel Richie couldn't hide that Jerry curl, though. No. Yeah, that's that's true. The curl's too good. Until so he got stronger. burned by those grits. Like, <laughs> oh, he got burned by grits too. No. What is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got what caught. Is this an epidemic? He got caught cheating on Brenda. Oh, that's right. And, he, and, uh, she, and threw she threw him out the window. Yeah, yeah. Wait. She beat him up real bad. Yeah. Oh, she beat him. And she Wait, also did she put grits, grits on, him? on him? No, that was Al Green. That was right? Al Green got the grits. Uh, oh, you know. <laughs> I mean, black oh. men and their grits. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know your man is cheating when he doesn't make grits anymore. Okay. Uh-huh. He's like, these are too throwable. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to take a break. During the break, we will procure a location for our improv from our guest, Ethan Lee Graham, and then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation episode 150 returns. <laughs> Hey, Paul F. Tompkins here on the street talking to people about watches, MVMT watches. Excuse me, excuse me, you two. Hey, bro. Uh, Do you have a little bit of time to talk about watches? Uh, I don't get it, but hit me up, bro. He's talking about recipes, talking to making a knish. Oh, yeah. I'll take a tuna. absolutely am not. I'll take a tuna on rye with cheddar. Oh, you thought I said T-H-Y-M-E, like the spice? The the, herb, yeah. The herb. Yeah. Three sandwiches to go. Uh... I'm not selling sandwiches. Okay. I, I I am talking to people. Are you not in Ina Garden? I, I beg your pardon. Ina Garden. What is what is that? Barefoot Contessa. Bro. She's a cook. Bro. Okay. Not talking about food at all. Mm-hmm. We're talking about uh, wristwatches. Mm. Ooh. Now you're interested. Yeah. Okay. I would like to tell you about this company called MVMT. They were. It's a company that started. It, it's movement, but it's spelled in a fun way. No. Oh yeah. MVMT. Oh, I get it. I yeah, get it. I get right? it. I get it. Yeah. And watches have movements. Oh. Like 3D? Like cartoon? Like cartoon? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, bro. We just came from the waves. We like, got, got a lot of salt water in the ear. Like Mickey, you put you put on your watch and Mickey Mouse talks to you? No, that's sound, by the way. Oh. <laughs> this is this is you know how the, the hands of the watch they move forward in time? Mickey Mouse. That's called the movement. I see. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Forward motion. There you have it. I love it. There you have it. So, MVMT movement was founded by two college dropouts. They oh, wanted. They I'm just high. like us. Are you guys? You're high fiving like crazy. Are you college dropouts? Yeah, we don't have a yeah. business though. <laughs> well, no. you could. If it, get a load of this. Story. We make good quiches, but that's about it. Yeah. You guys, you guys seem hungry. <laughs> Talking a lot about food. This morning, I had like bake, quiche. Bro. I had Florentine, not the eggs. So really just spinach. I had. <laughs> you had like a virgin Florentine? Yeah. I had. Do you remember the banquet scene in Mamma Mia? I do. I had everything they ate. I wish I had more time to talk to you guys about your breakfast. But I do have to talk about these watches. Speaking of time, these college dropouts felt it was time for us to create affordable Cool looking watches. Whoa. I'm into that. And so they did it. They did it themselves. That's so cool. I love uh, entrepreneurial spirit. And this country, this company has grown so fast. They are now in. They have sold almost two million watches. They're in 160 Whoa. plus countries. Whoa. Probably 161 or two. Yeah, they did. They, they rounded imagine. down, which is. Oh, know. it drives me. Now that you said that, see, that's what drives me crazy about this generation. Mm-hmm. I will, How old are you, sir? I will go home. I'm 22. I will go home now, and I will look up every location and count them off and write them on my whiteboard. Mm-hmm. And if it's a one-off, right. I'm going to go off. Right. I, hey, that's your prerogative. Yeah. Are you familiar with that song by Bobby Brown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen anything so nice as— Okay. <laughs> now, Movement has doubled their number of watch styles. They're now selling— High quality sunglasses. Is that Whoa, true? Shane it Tippin, is true. Shane now, Tippin. You guys like the waves. You like being out. Oh, you're high fiving like mad. You love being out on the beach. That's what I'm assuming you meant, right? Yeah. yeah. Like you surf. Yeah. 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 So sunglasses. Wet this suits. is right up your alley. Yeah. All yeah. Suit. <laughs> all the sun. Smurf boards. All of it. So, I'm sorry. Did you say Smurf boards? Yeah. Smurf boards with Smurfs on it. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. 
That, oh no! Did somebody just get a voicemail? That's my clock. It's so stupid. That's what it tells me. You're the hour. Oh my! You're carrying around a kitchen clock. Yeah. <laughs> More a timer. <laughs> we it's shaped time, like an egg. We time every interaction. <laughs> Well, that is that sounds like a lot of work. It is. But then we okay. don't look at we don't take it into consideration. Speaking of timing interactions, we're running a little tight on time right now. Um, I want to talk to you about how you can give movement watches as gifts. So you can buy one for yourself, but you can also give them as gifts. Valentine's Day is coming up. I don't know oh, if there's a special someone in your I know life. who I'm gonna buy it for and Ooh. don't don't tell him because he's right here, but I'm gonna buy it for him. This guy right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's I'm so sorry. cool. How rude. I didn't ask your names. Oh, no problem. Theodoro. <laughs> Theodore. Oh, now were you guys related? No. What so, kind of what kind of parent would name their kids two things that sounded so similar? I, I guess that was easier for me to believe than you guys are just friends that found each other. Well, you had in the phone book, we looked up we looked at each other in the reverse phone book where yeah. they list your first name in order to your last. That's right. And did you look each other up with the express intent of making friends with someone who had a name close How to How else do you make friends? Uh, there's no other way. Whether you're shopping, this seems like a great present for my friend for Valentine's Day. Well, whether you're shopping for her or him, and I'm pointing at both of you, mm -hmm. you can find everything from watches to fashion-forward bracelets and sunglasses in MVMT's limited edition gift box. Oh, it comes in one box? Yeah, that's smoke, right. Smoke, 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 or whatever they say. Bow, bow, bow. DJs? You're doing, the, you're doing the rap air horn? Yeah. Smoke, smoke, smoke? <laughs> <laughs> they usually do smoke stuff. That is true. Yeah. I see what you mean now. <laughs> they do usually do smoke stuff. Smoke machines or whatever. <laughs> That's right, Theodore. Everyone always says air horn, and I say, uh, how high? Air horny. Oh, That's, yeah, yeah. Air yeah. horny. Yeah, That's yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. That's fun. Yeah, it's funny. Listen, you get, the, these boxes are curated by MVMT's in house stylists, and it's got their trendiest pieces that your special someone will love. Oh, that's so cool. I'm so glad we ran into you, Yeah, me Paul. too. I am too. I didn't even give you my name. Did what? you recognize me? Well, you have a name tag. Oh, actually, that's, at the very beginning, I did say, I said my full name. Yeah. And I said I'm out on their street. We and pick up on everything. A, I am wearing a name tag. Mm -hmm. And there's a cardboard cutout of me holding a sign that says, my name is Paul F. Thompson. So it's narcissistic, just, Yeah, bro. It is. I have a problem. But you don't have a problem buying gifts this Valentine's Day because you can get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to MVMT.com slash PFT. MVMT.com slash PFT. And you can join the movement. What do you think about that? That's a funny joke. That's pretty good. That's so good. I'm going to use that tonight at, um, uh, well, I don't have plans. But I'll use it somewhere. What are you doing? Oh, cool. Yeah. You want to. I'm busy. I, I got to do these ads all day. Oh. oh. Yeah. All right. I got to talk to a lot of people today. Okay. I'll be doing it under 15 hours. <laughs> Hi there, Paul F. Tompkins out on the street talking to people about the Off Book Podcast. They've just released an episode with special guest Rachel Bloom from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Uh, excuse me, you two. Uh, yeah, what, what do you need? What's up? Oh, you're singing. That's interesting because I wanted to talk to you about something that's musical. You seem very stressed, sir. I just, I have a million appointments. I have to go to Starbucks. I have to go, you know, I... I one of your appointments is you have to go to Starbucks? Yeah, I just, sometimes I get it, you know, I, I, I like coffee. I'm a sure. real coffee, people say I'm a coffee snob, mm -hmm. so I go to Starbucks. Did you say snob? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you say? I, I say snob. All right, well, I just, my day is full, I'm chock-a-block with appointments, so I have to go to Starbucks, you know, so. I'll, I'll probably have to let you go then. I'm sorry, I wanted to talk to you about this podcast. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, you do have time for this? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Okay, like, Starbucks usually I'm only four or five hours. So I'll try to make fun. it quick. Are you together, by the way? Uh, yes. Yeah, we met, we met on the last block. I, I've been talking to her all about oh, uh, coffee. Oh, I love to yeah. just find a stranger and find out what their life's all about. Yeah. You, you seem very musical. I'm a happy lady. I just got divorced, and I'm ready to make some new friends. Congratulations. She was, she was sobbing a block ago. Oh, wow. That's a real turnaround for her. Good for you. I'm up, I'm down, I'm all around. What is your name? <laughs> <laughs> what is your name? I'm sorry. Calperd. Calperd. Okay. And what is your name, sir? I'm sorry. Gloria Graham Brown. You, thir oh, thirsty. I... Wait, I'm sorry? Gloria Graham Brown Thurston. Gloria Graham Brown Thurston? Yeah. Okay. My first name's Gloria Graham Brown, and my last name is Thurston. Thurston. Sure. That's an unusual name, first name Gloria Okay, okay. 2018. What? <laughs> this is a new era where I can be as many names as I want to be. Of course you, you know, may. And at Starbucks, they write out my full name every time. And they spell it right? 
Mostly. And when they don't, they hear about it. The other day, was at the Starbucks lady in front of me said, it's Jen with three ends. That's not even a lie. Were they in a row, the ends? Yeah. Mm. Now, Isn't it fun to make new friends? It is fun to make new friends, Calpern. Now, if I were to spell your name, let's say I'm the Starbucks employee, oh, God. and give me your usual order. I'll take a frappolatte mucchini venti legato. Okay. And what's your name? Gloria, <laughs> Gloria Graham Brown. I don't need Hart. your last name. Oh, okay. Gloria Graham Brown <laughs> Maloney. The thirst. You added a name <laughs> since the last time we've spoken. I'm going through a very messy divorce. Oh, okay. Me too. And it's confusing. <laughs> Wait, are you, were you two married yes. to each other? Yes. <laughs> well, this is so crazy. It's it's like something out of Crazy Ex Girlfriend, the hit TV show. Oh, I with love Rachel Bloom, so I love her. I love Rachel. her songs. I love. She's so talented. So fun. You're Rachel Bloom fans. A big time. Who knew a woman could be so funny? This That's is right. well. <laughs> <laughs> Nostradamus, he foresaw it years ago. Oh, in one of his fun sketches? Yeah, that's right. You're going to love this. He did this. all those on graph paper. Isn't it, that crazy? <laughs> it is crazy. I don't know who now. you're thinking of, but I'm in. <laughs> it is. If you're a Rachel Bloom fan, you're going to love this news. Rachel Bloom is going is going to a very special episode of the Off Book Podcast. This is a musical improvisation podcast. I barely read books, so I don't know if... I don't know what bearing that has on this, but... Off book. Is it about Anna Karenina? Couldn't, well, who, couldn't give a shit. Who's more off book than a person who doesn't read books? I like it. There you go. I thought you would, Gloria Graham Brown Maloney. <laughs> <laughs> now you're speaking my language. You can, you can hear Rachel Bloom, plus the incredibly talented hosts of Off Book, Zach Reno and Jess McKenna, as they improvise a musical called Reborn in the Fire. They just make it up. I have to be honest so. with you, that is exactly up my alley because I love musicals right. and I love new information. What's your favorite musical? Probably. Cats. Ca probably cats. Oh, one of the finest. Well, one. The oh, sexiest the thing anyway. So I dated someone for a couple of days and on the second date, they said, I'd love for you to come see me at my place of work. Hmm. So I went to the place of work. <laughs> That's how they phrased it? Yeah. I'd love for you to come see me at my place of work. I said, what's the address? They gave me the address. Broadway. And I went there and I said, oh, my stars and stockings. And he was, it was a cat on stage. He was dressed as a cat. That was his job. You recognized him immediately. Yes. And I said, listen, before I wasn't attracted to you, but now, honey, I'm in heat. I've never seen cats. What would you say is the plot? I would say it's... Uh, Loosely, I'll be honest. The plot is basically all the cats are sort of slutty, and mm -hmm. then one goes to heaven. <laughs> okay, That's pretty much it. All right. And uh, do you enjoy musicals as well? Oh, I love all the musicals. Hamilton, I've heard about. Sure. Wicked, I've heard about. The one about the Holocaust. That one's great. What, I, that I'm not one? familiar with that one. Cat cabaret. Oh, yeah, that technically is. <laughs> technically about Ah, oh, I yeah. love all of them. But you've not seen these. Mm -hmm. You've heard about them. I just read about them. Oh, okay. I, but, read the, I read the lyrics, and then I imagine what the songs might sound like. Like like the, the song Cabaret, mm -hmm. what do you think that sounds like? boo ba da 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 we're in a cabaret, everybody. Let's go. Do-do-do-do-do-do. Nazis are coming. Nazis are coming. Something like that. Right. Yeah. So sort of Glenn Let's Miller's, have some fun right Glenn Miller's now. in the mood, but not using any of the words from the song Cabaret. Yeah, and then some stuff about a threesome. Uh -huh. yeah. You will not want to miss this episode of the Off Book Podcast. If I you, love all three of those people. Well, I know. I listen to the podcast. Are you, you do listen to the podcast. I'm a Stitcher Premium subscriber. <laughs> this is unexpected. The first thing I did when I got divorced is I signed up for Stitcher Premium. I, I, pay, money, I may pay money to all these shows that I love. <laughs> yeah, she's paying. Okay. <laughs> That's a laugh and a half. Well, this is not for... A I, laugh and a half. None it's, of my business. The credit card has my full name and my middle initial. I'm listen to Off Book with guest Rachel Bloom on Apple Podcast, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Is Amelia Earhart going to be a guest? I'd love to hear her on something. Uh, is nothing good enough for you? Is there any chance you guys will get back together? Oh, yeah. Uh, probably a pretty good chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, friends. Welcome back. All is well. Sean's getting some water. Glug, 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 glug. I don't know why, for whatever reason, 
The microphones pick that up. Yeah. Like nobody's business. <laughs> yeah. Really? Anybody pouring water into these glasses. I tried so hard to make it so It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like what they were designed for. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see if anyone's stealing my water when I'm not around. <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have procured a location for our improv from Mr. Nathan LeGram. We're ready to begin our improv. But first, just so as you know. In order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say we need to go into the past for some reason. Someone's having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. Anytime we go into the past, we use this flashback sound effect. Classic Harp Glissando! But we can't stay in a flashback forever. We got to get back in time. <laughs> Anytime we want to get back from a flashback or anytime we want to go into the future for any reason, we'll use this flash forward sound effect. The vibes, a tribute to the late Lionel Hampton. This last sound effect, ladies and gentlemen, moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene, we want to find out what's happening at the exact same time somewhere else. We'll use this meanwhile button. Past. Present. Future. Everyone gets it. And now, it is time to reveal the location provided to us by David Graham, and that location is United Airlines Flight One Way LA to Duluth. <laughs> United Airlines Flight One Way LA to Duluth, we take you now to United Airlines Flight One Way LA to Duluth. Uh, yes, may I help you? Yeah, um, I just wanted to ask someone if they could teach me how to ride a bicycle. Uh, would you like that set up for you when we get to Montana? Uh, oh my god, we're going to Montana? Yes, this is <gasps> L.A. to Duluth. I, oh my god, I'm sorry, I thought we were going to du oh, of course we're going to Duluth, Montana, you're right, I, oh, god, my brain, this okay. Is, this is your captain speaking, just a reminder, uh, anyone... Who wanted to go to the Duluth that everyone else knows? We're, we're going to a different Duluth. Uh, what the hell? Yeah, hey, we're man, going to the one in Montana. Oh man, what, what did they so say? So just everyone, uh, keep your seatbelts buckled, keep your feet on the ground, and keep reaching for the stars. Why is everyone leaving the plane? Uh, oh, Mr. Flight Attendant, yes. I am. I'm in a in a state. I can't go to Montana. I, Why not? I've been banned from there. <gasps> Well, should I go tell the captain? Uh, no, because then the authorities will be waiting for me when we land. He's God. a cool. He's a cool captain. <laughs> he's a real cool dude. He don't snitch. This is your captain speaking. I am high AF. Right <laughs> I hope you're good with that. I'm very good flying high. See? Should he be flying right now? He's. Cool. Uh, it makes him more focused when he's high. Look, he's about to put this bird in the sky, and it's gonna fly. Look, all, all the way to Montana. All I wanted to do was go to Minnesota and bring this fold-up bicycle on a plane and have someone teach me to ride it. And now my plans have been upended. Duluth, Minnesota? Yeah, Duluth, Minnesota. <laughs> That's where I thought I was going. Uh, lady, now I see why you don't know how to ride a bike. <laughs> Duluth, Minnesota? Listen, I'm wanted in Montana, all right? All right. And I need your help. Will you be a friend to me or a foe? I'm going to fall a little bit longer, but then I'll be a friend. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, listen, I can I can go tell the captain. He's in, he's high right now. I can go tell him to fly us to Duluth, Minnesota. Okay, thank you so much. I mean, I'll be right back. Okay. Hey, Dave, what's going on, man? Listen, yeah. all right, I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to keep it always 100. Always, okay? always. There's a woman out there who really wants to know how to ride a bike. Now, I don't feel like any adult should have to live in a world where they don't know how to ride a bike. Hell no, riding a bike's fun. But here's the problem. What? She can only do that in Duluth, Minnesota, not Duluth, Montana. Does she know we're going to Duluth, Montana, not the other one? That's what I came <laughs> to talk to you about. Oh, okay. Can we switch? A lot of people left the plane. <laughs> right. Can we switch? Can we go? You know, I don't know why people, <laughs> they don't check this stuff. They should. First of all, I blame the I blame the media for not oh, yeah. for <laughs> not talking media. more about Duluth, and all these, Montana. All these liberal cucks who don't want to talk about I hate these cucks. <laughs> Look, I'm a super chill dude, but I hate cucks. 
Oh, oh somebody sorry. called. I got to get out there. All right. Anyway, wait. What was your question? <laughs> okay, we switched to Duluth, Minnesota. Yeah, sure. All right. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, 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 hi, excuse me. Yes. Hi, you didn't have to run. I, I, I had to run. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. But I, I, the listen. customer's always right. Okay, that was a strange. Okay, listen. Um, I am. I'm not. A crazy person, okay? I'm not normally <laughs> Thank a God. person that freaks I out. Tell. Mm-hmm. But there is a man four or five rows ahead of me. Uh-huh. And he seems like a villain of some sort. Yeah? He just seems evil. I it seems, I don't know. I think he might have some sort of... He might be trying to take the plane down to do something nefarious. Can, is there an air marshal on the flight or... Yes, I will get the air marshal. But I think... The air marshal is that guy. <laughs> really? I think that guy. I'm this is to... your captain speaking. <laughs> if you see anyone on the aircraft with a uh, unusual cane of any kind, <laughs> don't pay any attention. That's just some people have unusual canes. There's nothing more I can say about that or will say about that. Okay. See? Oh, by the way, we're going to Minnesota. <laughs> what? We're going to Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, Wait, they, they Minnesota. What? Minnesota. What? What? Uh? Oh, people are fouling back onto the plane. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Pardon me, lad. Pardon me. Hey, hey. Don't mind my eel skin cane. <laughs> uh, sir, um, I, I am the flight attendant here, as you can tell mm. by my cloak. Yes. Uh, <laughs> some people are nervous about the cane. Uh, There's there nothing any- to be nervous about the cane. The cane is eel skin. Ooh. <laughs> eel skin. Yes. Is it just like an eel that's like hard and standing straight up? On the its eel side? is no longer alive. And this is your captain speaking. If you do see uh, an unusual cane on board, remember to keep your credit cards away from it because they could become <laughs> demagnetized. <laughs> uh, sir, uh, if you wouldn't mind, I need to put the cane in the overhead. You mirror. can't touch the cane. <laughs> uh, may I ask why, sir? The cane is government property. <gasps> I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the CIA. You get one weapon. It's not a gun. It's not a knife. It's not a boomerang. Can you guess what it is? I hope it's a cane. <laughs> <laughs> then you hoped right. Yes! And by golly, hope floats, and so does this cane, because it's yes! wrapped in eel skin. Yes! And what's the handle made out of? Ivory? Of course. <laughs> Just like we ripped it off an elephant this morning. Nothing might, but the best for our operatives. We might have to give it back. Oh, okay. Is there a reason? Well, the initials are DJ. <laughs> yeah, for you, Daniel Jacobson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. This is a, an amazing opportunity. I, I can't wait to perform my duties. Are you worried about the initials for some reason? Did we get your name wrong, operative? Well, you know, it is the same initials as our fierce commander-in-chief. Uh, Dirk Job? <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Dirk Job? And Dirk Job ho, ho. Jr. <laughs> I don't know what you're getting at, sir. I may have been in the CIA bunker a bit too long, but what I do know is you're going to be the most talented operative out there. Now swirl your cape around your shoulders and get to that plane. <laughs> Give me that cane. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was an amazing story. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. And thank you for telling me. I'm going to keep it quiet because nobody else can know that you are the U.S. Marshal. Yes. Well, I am in the emergency row, so. You work directly under Dirk Job and. And Dirk Dob Jr. Dirk Dirk Dob Jr. (laughs) Uh, Dirk Dobber. You know what that is? That's That's a wasp's nest. I think we're getting off topic, sir. Oh my gosh, what is Dave doing up there? He's spending so long talking to these people. It's like he gets to know everyone. That's gross. And yeah, what are you going to become pen pals? Yeah, what are you going to do? Like write letters to each other? What are you going to do? Like, hey, I got your latest letter. When are you going to write me back? What are you going to do? Be like, my dearest Evelyn, what are you- <laughs> this field is littered with bodies. What are you going to do? Get your friend to play harmonica and a fiddle? Yeah, what are you going to do? Like carry your friend <laughs> up to battle instead of leaving him there for dead because his mother wants to see him because she's his last hope? Yo, I am Hope Floats, by the way. Oh, I love that movie. Is it hey, playing right hey, now? Hey, y'all, fly, y'all are flight attendants, right? Mm. Yeah, can't, can't see our cloaks? Yeah, what know. are you going to do about it? Uh, hey, I'm sorry. Can I get some water, please? Water. Get some water, because y'all haven't come through with the carts. Where are you seated? 
I'm in C17. Mm. 17. 17 C, I guess. Okay, okay, so more of a back of the plane kind of person. Yeah, I'm a back of the plane. You get guy. water right, right before we land. I don't know why he want no water. We were flying a Lake Superior <laughs> up in Duluth. Hey, mama, they got you, so much water. That's a, one of the biggest lakes you there is. Mama, I ain't drinking from Lake Superior. Listen, you better get sit down. My mama, hey, just give me some. Can I have some? You don't need no water. Can you sit down, boy? Can, can you? Boy, listen to your mama. <laughs> Listen to it now. Daddy, sit. Hey, man. You Daddy, know what? You tell this boy to sit down. We trying to get to the loot. Okay, we finally I, I'm not going to drink any water. I'm just talking to these flight attendants. This okay? is your captain speaking. Uh, any families who are now standing, <laughs> uh, we advise you to sit down. Uh, just any families, just please do see, uh, sit down in your seats. Yeah, no, don't nobody tell my family what to do. <laughs> hey, okay, Let Daddy, me go sit up down. Here. I'm going to go, go ahead right. and talk no, to this captain. Right. What are you doing? You got that right. Daddy, what are you doing? I'm going to go ahead and talk to this captain. Go on, talk to that captain. Excuse me. Oh. Excuse me. Hey, come on Excuse in. Excuse me. Come hey. on in. Now, I need to talk to you. Hey I there. feel like that comment was directed Hold directly. On a, hold on a second. Let's get, <laughs> let's get to know each other. Now, my name's Chris. My name is Lardell. Lardell, nice to meet you. And Lardell, and my, I'm here with my wife, Early, and my son, Lardell Jr. Oh, very we call nice. him LDJ, mm. like Lyndon D. Johnson. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Who set us free? Lord, oh, hello. This, this is Erlene. She, she hello, followed Arlene. me up How here. are you? How you doing? I'm How Chris. you? How you doing? I'm Chris. Uh, what can I do for you folks? Well, that comment that you made on the intercom was felt directed right at us. Oh, can I tell you a secret? Please do. It was. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we one of the few families of Duluth mm-hmm. that look like us. And... Uh, we all very tall. <laughs> You're extremely tall. Yes. Yes. I'm 7'1", my wife is 6'6", six, six, and my son is 7'3". It's you the must, Inuit in us. <laughs> you must be very uncomfortable on this plane. Well, yes. we wish we had more leg room, but you what can. you going to do? Hey, hey, guys, flight attendants. Hey, so... Yeah, what up? While my parents are up there distracted, could you guys just quietly pour me some water? That way, my mama won't know I didn't drink out of Lake Superior, and I can quench my thirst. Um, um, I mean, I... Mean, I mean, what do you, do you think? think? Oh, I was going to ask you what you think. Oh, my gosh. That's because we're so collaborative. Right. Just quietly, just pour me some water. Okay. How about nope. this? Okay. The water in the sink, uh-huh. in the bathroom, okay. it's not technically potable. Potable. Okay. Potable. No, it's potable. You're right. I'm sorry to correct like, you. I was thinking of potent potables. Oh, good, 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 you say good point. Good point. Good Chris. Good Chris. <laughs> good Chris to you, our captain, who we love. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to take this fucking water myself. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. hey. What? You can't do that, sir. Sir. Sir, you can't do that. (laughs) Selena, sound the alarm. (laughs) (laughs) What the hell? A water breach. (laughs) What's going on? A water breach. What the hell's going on? A water breach. I'm sorry, mama. I just needed some water. What have you done with my son? Leave my baby alone. Not without my daughter. I'm sorry, folks. I just got to make a real quick announcement here. Uh, this is your captain speaking. We seem to have a water breach. We would ask that you all remain in your seats, except the air marshal. This is your time to shine. <laughs> Dave, Dave, okay, yeah. I heard about the water breach. Are you okay? Sorry, I was right. You seem very out of breath. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> it's not that big a plane. <laughs> well, how are you so out of breath? Oh, my gosh. I, had to, I, I saw that the, the pilot was getting attacked by these two giants. And then I saw back here that somebody was a water breach. And so I had to run back and forth. And then the air marshal tripped me with his uh, EO cane. Well, oh, yeah. it must have been an accident, right? Yeah, he, I mean, he stuck it out on purpose. Dave, right. I've been watching you run back and forth. And if I can't learn to ride this bicycle on this plane, I want to bequeath it to you. Huh? So that you can ride back and forth and handle all this mayhem. That's a great idea. Thank you. I'll get on this mini bike. All right, I'm going to go to the back. Dave, is that a great idea to get on the mini bike on the plane? <laughs> You're right. My knees are going to be hitting the seat. <laughs> Dave, you can't run anymore. Go fast. Hey, Dave. Dave. I'm sorry about it. Sorry, sorry about the water breach, okay? I'm sorry. Who's... Oh, hi. That's a cool bike. Thank you so much. One of the passengers gave it to me. She doesn't know how to ride it. She was supposed to be riding it in... This plane was going to Duluth, Montana. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're, going we're going to Minnesota, to Minnesota now. Right. Uh, and okay. she was going to learn to ride it there. But she bequeathed it to me. Uh, You've talked me down. Talked you down from what? The threat has been neutralized. Take, take the water. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. I'm so sorry. This is your captain speaking. The water breach is now no longer concerned. The water breach has been taken care of. Thank you very much. Pardon me. Uh, uh, yes. Dave, uh, yes. could you tell me how long are we going to be taxiing? 
Uh, well, the 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 air the, the airport is very full. There's a bunch of planes trying to get out of here right now. Oh, uh, uh, here's your captain again. I uh, forgot to tell you, we have uh, begun our descent and landed. <laughs> God, these flights we just, just get longer and longer, don't they? We just went on the gate. I stood up that whole plane. Seatbelts are a myth. I stood up. I was running up and down the aisle that whole trip. Seatbelts are a myth. I don't need to be strapped in. <laughs> Welcome to flight school. Um, listen, if you're on one of these uh, jumbo jets... Um, you know, they're big planes. Uh, mm-hmm. You can, yeah. like, run up and down them and, uh, nev- you know, you'll be out of breath. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. One thing I got to tell you. You can't tell anybody this, all right? Okay. Seatbelts? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're a myth. What? what? You don't need seatbelts. But the, No. But, now hold. Permission to speak freely, sir. Yeah, go ahead, man. The light. <laughs> the yeah. light would suggest that they are not a myth, that they are, in fact, uh, aforementioned and accounted for. Who up? Look, you're very eager. I think that's great. I can't wait to take to the skies, sir. I know you don't got you don't got to call me sir. My apologies, Captain. Just no, no. That's call me Ron. That's my name. Uh, Lo siento, Ron. Listen. Oh, all right. So the light is just so people aren't running around all the time, so that they're not in the flight attendant's way. I, Permis- per- permission to speak freely, Ron. Yeah, you can. It's uh, just okay, flight Ron, school. Ron, it's, um, it's flight attendant school. If seatbelts are a myth, I have seen seatbelts. They exist. Uh-huh. They exist in this world. Great okay. point. All right. So that they are not a myth because I've what seen I, them. I see what I did wrong. I okay. see what I did wrong. Seatbelts do exist. Okay. Mm. The fact, the idea that they do anything, that's what the myth is. Permission to speak, Ron, sir. <laughs> yeah, you guys can just say, hey, Ron. You don't have to. <laughs> well, if the seatbelts are a myth, what about the oxygen mask? Ooh. Ooh. That you're supposed to put on yourself first Ooh. before you put on somebody else. Ooh. That's right. Okay. Here's why you do that. Mm-hmm. And don't tell anybody this. Okay. All right. They're not oxygen masks. It's knockout gas. <laughs> so oh. Whoa. we want we want people to help themselves first, knock themselves out first. Yeah. Oh. So the other people just, uh, they go unconscious. So there's just a bunch of kids and elderly running around the plane. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Great. Makes sense. Check this out. Thank you, Captain Ron, sir. All right, you don't. You guys can just call me Ron. That's Permission cool. to speak, Ron, freely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I have a question. What My is name it? is Dave. Hi, Dave. I'm not in great shape. As a flight attendant, <laughs> if I have to run from the front of the plane to the back of the plane, right? Can you give me an approximate distance and how much carbs I'll need to eat before I do it? Fuel. Yeah. Well, okay. The plane. I'm going to say from uh, end to end. If you were to run it, it's uh, approximately 50 feet. Okay? Thank you, sir. So. Lo siento. <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 <laughs> boom. <laughs> so, yes. Wow, don't cough on yes. me. Sorry. 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 Okay, okay. okay. Listen, I haven't had any water. Just listen to me, okay? Just mm-hmm. listen. I'm, I'm not insane or anything. Okay, the, things on this flight have been going very cuckoo bananas, and I feel like I'm the. Can you just tell me what's going on? Why is the the air marshal look so scary? And why are people running around the flight? I'm I'm starting to get a little freaked out. Sir, please, you sound crazy. No, I'm not. Did you hear the first thing I said to you? The first thing I said, I was not crazy. <laughs> Sir, you are the one yelling. I am not crazy. Sir, I'm going to have to call the air marshal. This is no, you can't call speaking. the air marshal. Uh, if you are, this is Captain Speak. If you're crazy, please stop yelling. I mean, is there a camera back here? I sir, feel like the sir. goddamn pilot has commented on everything. That sir, we, do, do we have a are? problem? Do we have a problem? You motherfucker. You're the fucking villain. I know you're a villain. Look at your cane. What is wrong with my cane? Well, it's it's villainous. It's It has skin on it. It's eel skin. <laughs> Where'd you get that eel? Did you kill it with your bare hands, you villain? I'm no villain. You're the villain. <sighs> I'm going to go collect trash, guys, if you don't mind. Wait, no. Don't, don't, you're not going anywhere, Dave. I, I got you. I got Dave. All right, Dave. You're Get not, over here, Dave. No, no, I got no, Dave. Oh, no, my God. A hostage no, situation. No, no, oh, my God. He's gone not. from pen pals to hostage situation. Uh, classic I Dave. Classic Dave. I'm not fucking crazy. Unleash the power of the cave. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh my gosh. He turned to ice. <laughs> uh, this is your captain speaking. If you have witnessed a supernatural event, we ask that you uh, 
pretend that you didn't. Okay, I see we're next in line to taxi to the uh, gate, so uh, I'm uh, gonna do that, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for flying United. We have been your in-flight crew this afternoon. If you were potentially a villain slash air marshal, or if you were impaled and turned to ice by a villain slash air marshal, please join the rest of our in-flight crew in singing our signature send-off song. Water, I am thirsty. I want water. You know what I mean? Okay, hide. This fucking water. Give me the water. Water is so good. Water is so good. I spilt it on this ice man. I'm unthawing from the ice. You motherfucker. I'm back. Unleash the power of the cage! Ah, <laughs> shit! <laughs> Boom! Uh, uh, yes, what is it? How's that bike treating you, Dave? Oh my gosh, I had to, I had to toss that thing. I see a lot's <laughs> happened on this flight. It, it was much easier to run up and down. Hey, I never caught your name. Oh, me? Yeah. My name's Tandy Newton. <laughs> Tandy Newton? Yes, that um, one. Of Hollywood fame? Of the one and only. Teddy, I know this might sound crazy, but... Nothing sounds crazy to me after what I've seen, boy. <laughs> Since we're here in Minnesota, in Duluth, uh, I was wondering if maybe you wanted to grab a milkshake? Sounds good. I'm not... I think I'm not married, maybe. <laughs> Great. And even if you are, this is strictly platonic. I just need oh, a friend. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'd love to be your friend. Hey, thanks for not flying me to the state where I'm wanted. <laughs> you got it, Tandy. You got it. And it all happened in a place called <laughs> Spontaneation. <laughs> Tony Newsome, where Hello. can people find you? What do you want to tell them about? Uh, I am at TandyNewton.com. <laughs> no. uh, Trondy Newman on Twitter and Instagram. Um, the comedy Get Down is probably done airing, but I hear its DVR numbers are huge, whatever the hell that means. So. <laughs> I'm one of those DVR numbers. Hey, thanks, my friend. So you can watch it later. It's on uh, BET with uh, Said the Entertainer and George Lopez et al. Uh, yeah, and then my album Four Lost Souls on Bloodshot Records. There you go. Yes. Carl Turk! Uh, you can find me at Damn it, Carl, on all things social. Mm-hmm. Come to the UCB Theater. Check out White Women every second Friday of the month mm-hmm. at 10.30 p.m. Uh, Harold Knight. And uh, check out my album, uh, 400 Degrees by Juvenile. So, <laughs> uh, I hear watch, good things. <laughs> I hear good things. Watch Ghosted Sunday nights on Fox at 8.30. There we go. Sean. Yes. Yes. Don't. yes. Um, at Sean Distin on everything. Google it, of course. And, uh, yeah, UCB, whatever. Stuff's going on. Sean, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the, the wind really got knocked out of your sails. <laughs> yeah, it's just I don't have an album ready right now. And <laughs> I just feel like I should have an album ready, so. Evan Schletter! He's Evan Schletter on all the things. Yes. Go to EvanSchletter.com to seek out Evan Schletter's non spontaneous nation work. It is delightful because Evan Schletter is only the best. How do you spell Levitch Letter? Why, it's simple, stupid. It goes like this. <clears throat> E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. Folks, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, and we'll read it on the air, like from this person, Frey Hay. <laughs> this, this review was posted two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it is a five-star review entitled Love Improv. If you like improv and good improv, you will love this show. Yes, it's silly and dumb and nonsensical. <laughs> but that's what is so funny. If you don't like improv, then sure you won't like this. All right. <laughs> As for me, ladies and gentlemen, you can find my live dates at paulftompkins.com slash live. I am P.F. Tompkins on all the social platforms. And 
and I love you. Thank you for sticking with us for 150 episodes. Uh, our audience is fantastic. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to engineer Chef Kevin for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever! Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in presenti! Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, Colin Anderson, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com. <laughs>